As the war neared in the 1930s, the RAF sought a heavy fighter that could conduct long-range escort missions. With its twin Rolls-Royce engines, Hispano Suiza guns, precision and agility wings, and bubble canopy for unmatched visibility, the Westland Whirlwind Fighter was a one-of-a-kind aircraft. Even with its powerful weapons and cutting-edge technology, the Westland struggled to unseat more mortal planes like the Hurricane and Spitfire. The United Kingdom started rapidly accelerating aircraft development in the middle of the 1930s as a potential conflict with the newly powerful Third Reich loomed. Britain wanted to be ready for this possible attack. In spite of its advanced weapons and cutting-edge technology, the Westland Whirlwind fighter encountered several difficulties in its quest for victory. In an arms race, Germany's Luftwaffe and Kriegsmarine sought to outgun the Royal Navy and Air Force. The RAF had created the Hurricane and Spitfire, but their American Browning machine guns were simple and had a limited firing range. For modern air warfare, aviation specialists needed powerful gun, long-range aircraft. The British Air Ministry released operating requirements F-3735 in 1935 stating that they need an aircraft equipped with a 20mm gun. With four Hispano 20mm guns and a maximum speed of at least 330 miles per hour, more than 40 miles faster than the typical British bomber operating at 15,000 feet, the aircraft was designed to be a single-seat, all-weather heavy fighter. The P-9 type, which had two Rolls-Royce Kestrel engines and a tubular monocoque fuselage with a T-tail, was first offered by Yeovil's Somerset-based Westland aircraft in 1937. The P-9 was the first British aircraft to have a canopy, offering superior all-around view. Additionally, the main and tail wheels of the aircraft were retractable. The P-9 was powered by the same Kestrel engine as was used in the Hanley Page Hayford and Hawker Fury. When the all-metal prototype made its first flight in October 1938, onlookers were amazed. The acquisition of Austria and growing geopolitical tensions with Adolf Hitler sparked new tensions with Britain and France and heightened the likelihood of conflict, which in turn accelerated testing. The enhanced Peregrine Rolls-Royce engine which produces over 850 horsepower, was chosen by the Air Ministry to replace the Kestrel. Retentions were in full force throughout Western Europe in 1939, which resulted in an order for 200 Western Whirlwind aircraft. These were equipped with four Hispano Mark 120 mm guns, which were manufactured under license from the French Hispano Suiza HS-404 cannon and were mounted with the new Peregrine engine. Although the Whirlwind grew to be one of the most powerful aircraft of its day, its guns had a 60-round magazine and were prone to jamming. In June 1940, the first production Whirlwind took to the air. Delivered to Royal Air Force Units 137 and 263, the Western Whirlwind was a dependable and swift aircraft in July 1940. With a maximum speed of almost 360 miles per hour, it was not appropriate for small airstrips despite its fast landing speed. Although it did not engage in combat during the Battle of Britain, the aircraft's operating range was comparable to that of the Spitfire. By December 1940, the unit was deemed operational and the threat posed by the Germans had vanished. Early in 1941, the British High Command came to the conclusion that it would be impossible to battle the Germans without the assistance of other Allied forces unless it had every Spitfire and Hurricane the industry could make. Rolls-Royce discontinued manufacturing of the Peregrine engine used in the Western Whirlwind in order to concentrate on creating the potent Merlin engines for the Hurricane and Spitfire. As a result, only 11 aircraft were produced. 
the last of which was sent to the RAF in early January 1942. While Britain's greatest act of defiance, standing alone against the Wehrmacht, was not experienced by the Westland whirlwind, it did see action during crucial months when the UK repelled the German Luftwaffe with little help from allies. The aircraft was commended for its combat capability and handling by British pilots who operated it. During World War II, Sergeant G.L. Bookwell of 263 Squadron saw a Western whirlwind while flying over France. He extolled the event, calling it wonderful and a rarity for many. Nevertheless, the whirlwind needed more time to grow or be used widely in order to fully use its idea and overcome its shortcomings. These aircraft frequently experienced rapid development or limited service, which resulted in teething problems that eventually became restrictions. But in spite of this, several well-known Royal Navy pilots, like Captain Eric Melrose Winkle Brown, thought the whirlwind was a letdown because of its poor performance in comparison to other British aircraft. The whirlwind's lesson is that in order to fully use their concept and get rid of their flaws, radical aircraft need extensive development and use. Because there were only so many Peregrine engines produced, the whirlwind aircraft type was initially criticized for its fast landing speed. Nevertheless, the whirlwind squadrons persisted in using them in low-level strikes across the English Channel and occupied France against the Germans. In February 1941, they managed to bring down a German Arado AR-196 floatplane close to the English Channel, demonstrating their partial effectiveness against German fighters. The British aircraft lost control during the duel and fell into the water, but the cost was great. As part of their reconnoiter and convoy patrols, the whirlwinds were able to locate German Kriegsmarine submarines and swift attack craft in the English Channel. Though their missions were restricted, the whirlwind did come into contact with other Axis aircraft on occasion, including the formidable German Folkwolf FW-190, Messerschmitt Bf-109, Yonkers Ju-88, and Dornier Do-217 bombers. In late 1941 and early 1942, the 263rd Squadron took part in bomber escort flights throughout the day. Using its 20mm weapons, the Western Whirlwinds led an escort mission of 54 Blenheim bombers against the German power installations at Cologne in August 1941. Their limited range, however, prompted them to abandon the British bombers close to Belgium, where German interceptors feasted on them. The unit also took part in anti-shipping operations, in which the Messerschmitt Bf 109 shot down three enemy aircraft with little damage to their airframes and intercepted four British fighters. Due to these minor victories, Squadron 137 was established in September 1941 with the mission of striking railroad targets in Belgium and France that were under occupation. The emphasis on single-engine fighters and a lack of spare parts led to the end of the Western Whirlwind's useful life as a British fighter. Although it would have required a significant redesign, the British military explored starting up manufacturing again with the Merlin engine. The Merlin engine's greater and heavier weight compared to the Peregrine made the Whirlwind's aerodynamics more difficult to design. The British military chose to concentrate on the Spitfire and other single-engine fighters as a consequence. The Whirlwind nevertheless found a use for itself. Of the 116 Mark I aircraft, 67 were modified or manufactured as the Westland Whirlwind II, a single-seat fighter bomber with underwing racks that was a Mark II. These bombers, often referred to as Mark II World Bombers, were successful in their cross-English Channel operations. Two experimental prototypes of the Westland Whirlwind fighter, which was never put into production, were created by Westland engineers. One was a lone night fighter variant equipped with a 37mm cannon or 12 7.7mm machine guns. 
1942, the U.S. Navy received one damage model for assessment. However, the Navy disapproved of the model's performance and had it wrecked in the middle of 1944. Whirlwind's final combat mission took place in June 1943, targeting Luftwaffe airfields in northeastern France. After being taken out of service, the remaining aircraft were replaced by Hawker Typhoons and Hurricane Mark IIs. The Whirlwind's engine was unreliable and weak, which significantly hampered its ability to launch a ground attack. After serving as an executive transport for Westland, the final operational aircraft in British aviation history was retired in 1947 due to age. After the war, Westland concentrated on creating and producing helicopters, especially American-made Sikorsky S-55s. Western Whirlwind was the name of one of the company's first helicopters in the Royal Air Force and Royal Navy.